So yeah, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, it's uh, so important right now as our government's trying to take us backwards on climate change, cutting our renewable energy target, making us more dependent on fossil fuels, uh, that people are here standing up. Yeah, this day of action's been called because the United Nations is gonna be meeting on Monday uh, to discuss what the world is gonna do about climate change. And it's time for them to, not, to stop talking and actually start acting. But our Prime Minister's decided that he's not even going to come to the table and talk. Uh, he's not coming, so shame on him. And that's why when our leaders aren't going to show leadership, it's so important that people like you are here uh, standing up and actually making our voices heard, uh, telling the world that Australia does want action on climate change. Our government's not going to wake up tomorrow and decide that they're going to act on climate change because there's so many of you here today. Uh, we need to keep the pressure on over the coming weeks, months and years until we do get serious action on climate change. And that looks like 100% renewable energy. That looks like banning fossil fuel, coal exports through the Great Barrier Reef. That's what that looks like. And it's going to take a lot of work. Fran Baum's a distinguished professor of public health and the director of the Institute of Health, Society and Equity at Flinders. And she's also very, very involved uh, in the people's health movement. So welcome, Fran. Great. Thanks a lot. Good morning, everybody. Um, I work with the People's Health Movement, a network of global activists. There's thousands of us in 50 countries around the world. And we know that climate change is the biggest threat to health. Our charter says that... Um, these fact that, that climate change is going to have far-reaching effects on people's health and that the root causes of this destruction, including the unsustainable exploitation of natural resources, is also the absence of a holistic vision and is also the spread of individualistic and profit-maximising behaviours and overconsumption by rich people and rich countries like Australia. Now, that's just as true as when we wrote our, our charter in 2000. And we now know that the biggest of these environmental threats, climate change, isn't a prediction. Global warming isn't a prediction. We all know it is happening. I also note that every major medical journal, the British Medical Journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, the Lancet, have published multiple articles warning of the health effects of climate change. These, these threats are direct. Exposure to thermal extremes, the effects on respiratory systems, we all know about the increasing number of disasters. But there's also a whole lot of indirect effects. The increase in vector and waterborne diseases, the impacts of sea level rises with salt water encroaching on fresh, food insecurity, mental health effects, look at the impacts on farmers in failed agricultural regions, and just the mental health effects of the fear of the future, of people wondering, do we have a future as humans? And poor people suffer most from these impacts. They're less able to protect themselves. If you think about it, the rich countries in the world use uh, something like 75% of carbon, while our fair share is only 19%. How fair is that? Rich countries contribute, we contribute 40, nearly half of the admissions, and yet we have less than 20% of the population. How fair is that? And in health terms, we have to see that neoliberalism has been bad for our health. Privatisation is bad for our health. Public services are vital to health. Equal growth is vital to health. We know that unequal countries are less healthy than equal countries. So the very act of being equal is good for our health. And as Gandhi said, there is enough for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. And we, and we currently have a very greedy class of, of people working within capitalism who don't give a damn about the environment or the future. We know that climate action for our health means more renewable energy. It means carbing and stopping the use of carbon. And regardless if you understand the climate change, the precautionary principle means we should act. Collectively, we have addiction that is truly bad to our health. We're addicted to carbon, and the rich are addicted to the wealth that flows from that carbon. We have to kick that addiction because it's a threat 
not just to our health, but to the actual survival of all of us on this planet. Less carbon use means more health, more equity, and human survival. We need carbon action now. What do we need? Now. When do we need it? Now. It was suggested that I regale you with horrifying tales of my experiences in a long career as a fiery and how climate change will inevitably increase the threat. I certainly can tell you about catastrophic fires where the radiant heat will kill you at several hundred metres and fireballs rolling across the land leaving the soil burning in their wake. I can stand here and tell you about it because fortunately, I haven't had to witness it myself. I could also tell you that the CSIRO, CSIRO projections are that the combined frequency of days with very high and extreme fire intensity ratings are likely to increase up to 25% by 2020 and 70% by 2050. It's estimated that Australia will require twice as many firefighters by 2030. But what's the point? What would it change? How would it affect our ability to cope with the reality of the dramatically increasing threat from fire? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stephanie and I'm 11 years old. I am here to tell you to work on climate change. What I worry most about climate change is that my friends and I will not be able to live the kind of life that you have lived. This is my future and the unfair thing is that when I will be growing up, many of the people making the wrong decisions today will no longer be there to see for themselves. I wrote a poem when I was seven years old and that I would like to share with you today. I want climate change to stop so all of us children can grow up. If climate change goes on, our planet will be gone. It's not just about us, you know. Think of animals and trees or so. Please tell your neighbours and all your friends to stop climate change before the world ends. Every day and every night we must carry on with our fight. We need to improve every year and try and get more people here. Thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you, Stephanie. One more round of applause. Thank you so much again, everyone who's come together for this. Um, make sure you're sharing the photos on Facebook and look out for the news tonight. We had 7, 9, 10 ABC along today. So we'll be making a difference and um, there's going to be rallies happening across the country tomorrow. So make sure you think it out. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Bye.